the moment I bring out the brand new and somewhat exclusive, at least here in the UK, since it's not being sold here yet officially, Nokia 701, you're going to look at me quizzically and say you've seen this one before. And you'd be half right. The 701 is a direct upgrade from the venerable C7 here on your left, which was launched at the end of 2010. What the 701 does is take about half a dozen nickels that everyone had with the C7 and rectifies them. Everyone. About the only thing left to worry about is the use of an EDOF camera here. And even that got a bit of an upgrade, but more on that later. With Symbian Bell, that's uh, two revisions of the core OS on from the C7's launch version, which was uh, Symbian 3, the 701 behaves like a very different beast. The user interface has been massively streamlined, bringing it in line with the likes of Android and Windows Phone. We saw that in the previous phone show with the tiny Nokia 700, and Symbian Bell works even better here on the 701 with the larger screen. In addition, accusations of occasional lag in Symbian 3 are a thing of the past, with the 701 doubling the amount of RAM to 512 megabytes and almost doubling the processor speed to 1 gigahertz. Add it all up and the 701 flies. I know some viewers are still nursing grudges against Symbian, but the user experience in this device is largely excellent. That's largely, mind you, because Nokia has mostly sorted out the web browser, now with multiple windows, text reflow, fixed up the email application, massively updated the store client, but the social experience, the social client, remains steadfastly written in web runtime. It's slow and it's clunky. If ever an app needed to rewrite in native code, it's Nokia Social. I mentioned the screen just now. This is another claimed big difference over the C7. Nokia claims the 701 has the brightest screen of any smartphone on the planet. And I'm not going to argue about a few nits. The 701 apparently has over a thousand of them, whatever the heck a nit is. <laughs> the C7's display was already excellent, mind you, but its visibility outdoors rather suffered, partly because of the use of AMOLED and partly because of the uh, oleophobic fashion mirror coating. For the 701, Nokia has switched display technologies to in-plane switching, IPS, as first used by Apple's iPhone 4 which itself is pretty good at most light and has good viewing angles. But Nokia has added its superlative clear black display, CBD polarizers into the mix, and the result takes the screen beyond the C7s. This is visible in all light conditions. The only negative is that the true blacks of OLED aren't there anymore. You can probably tell in this concert clip. And that the three and a half inch screen is a little small by 2011 standards. Under the hood, in addition to the huge OS upgrade and the processor and RAM bump, the 3G cellular circuits are upgraded to, to a competitive 14 megabits down and 6 megabits per second up. Plus, the other aerials are as good as usual, including the all-important for 2012 near-field communications. Having used the Google Nexus S, I can say that Symbian's NFC implementation is, so far, many months ahead of Android's. Battery life on the Nokia 701 seems better than on the C7, despite the faster processor, which is good. <laughs> uh, around two days of average use per charge. And part of the credit is the new uprated by a good extra 10% 13 milliamp hour version of the venerable BL5K battery. And as before, you can just swap in a new battery when you're out and about in a heartbeat. A feature seemingly getting forgotten on some modern smartphones. Another rant of mine, maybe for another day. All of which brings me to the camera in the 701. The faster main processor is matched by a more powerful image processor in the electronics, and the result is far better EDOF photos not over sharpening its results and now keeping everything in focus from about 35 centimetres through to infinity. Not quite true macro, but certainly good enough for snapping casual nature subjects, of business cards or train tickets, etc., as shown here. Oh yes, and the 701 is a proper shutter key that's now easy to find blind. The C7s was flush and a real pain. Overall, I was pleased with my 701 photos for a smartphone with zero camera pretensions. Videos taken on the EDOF unit are as stunning as usual. Test video footage at 720p on the Nokia 701. Pretty good EDOF video, I reckon. Not bad audio either. The 701 is currently around £250 SIM free, putting it firmly in the mid-tier of smartphones, yet with some fairly unique features that aren't on the Android competition. OK, there's not quite the same breadth of apps as on Android, but as with the tiny Nokia 700 in the last phone show, you do get a super screen, full NFC functions, USB on the go, great battery life, excellent build quality of materials, dual charging, a decent speaker. I could go on. Suffice it to say that the 701 impressed me more than I thought it would. If you can live without the N8's monster camera, then 
with the heavy duty internals here, I'd even argue that the 701 is currently the Symbian flagship, which isn't bad for £250 all in. Yeah, I'm on the time link at the moment. <laughs> I gotta go. Catch you later. Bye. I'm speaking to you, believe it or not, from the year 2015, thanks to a carefully set up tachyon link. Thanks to the IT team at Tech Talk UK who made this possible. What's that? I don't look like I've aged much since the good old days of the phone show back in 2011. Very kind of you to say so. What I thought would be interesting to those of you who are stuck in the past, well, OK, that's uh, all of you in my case, was to describe how we use our phones halfway through the second decade of the new millennium. I did try to guest on Steve's audio podcast as myself in the future, but it was pointed out to me that the temporal loops involved might mean the entire galaxy disappeared in a puff of smoke, so no. I did think it appropriate to show this particular phone on this show since it was something that Nokia has used fairly retro styling on. It's very similar to a phone from nine years earlier. If you were watching the phone show back in 2010, five years ago, you'll have seen something like this. This is the uh, Nokia N86. I got it from the phone museum. <laughs> very thick and chunky. It's very similar when viewed face on, but of course, uh, phones are much uh, smaller and slimmer these days. This is 2015, after all. I guess you'll be wanting some tech specs. My Nokia 1128 is 5mm thick, which is about average these days. It weighs about 55 grams. It's got a quad core Xanthia F8 processor, 8 gig of RAM, 32 gig of temporary flash memory, but of course, uh, everything I do really exists in the cloud, as we all do. Uh, the 1128 is just my access point. There's more feedback coming in um, via the time link from you. You're surprised my phone is so small. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Back in 2011, phones were getting huge, uh, but that fad did die a bit of a death in 2012 once Apple and Google and Nokia and a few others all perfected their voice technology, of which more later. With molecular bonding, our phones just sit securely on our arms in 2015. That's one reason why big phones died out. My forearm's only so big. And yes, the phone detaches, it's like Velcro when I need to shower. It does seem incredible to us now in 2015 that Phone screens were once not only the primary way to access information, but also to input it. <laughs> a 2.6 inch extra reflective display on this uh, Nokia here is fine for most people now, since most information is presented in audible or even dis highly summarized distilled form here on the phone. And just about all input is via voice. Okay, okay, when things get really, really noisy, I do occasionally have to use uh, a Q-swipe touch input, but not very often. I did believe all of you got a glimpse of the future, um, that's my present, with Apple, who were then just a tech company. Now, of course, they're the monopolistic supplier of just about everything in our living rooms and offices, but uh, uh, they were buying up and then gradually improving on Siri, an intelligent assistant that accepted voice queries and spat out answers. That must have seemed really cool then, but all rather primitive now, of course. The dominant voice technology these days is VIP, that's Voice Interrogation Protocol, and every phone manufacturer has its own implementation. So, for example, I can do all the obvious stuff like starting music playback or calling or emailing someone, but even, even you youngsters from 2011 will have seen that. But I can also get quite complicated information just by you know pressing a button and speaking. Check news sites for stories on Charlotte Halley. Use fuzzy search on her name. Summarise the most popular into two paragraphs and show me. Apparently she got voted off the X Factor last night. Yes, that's still going for singing too well. Apparently that's not allowed. <laughs> there we go. Five seconds and I've got the uh, summary. I'm going to be heading off on the mag rail soon into London. So uh, check news sites for mentions of 2015 campaign. Context is UK. Remove duplicates. Package as audio. Maximum length 30 minutes. Give that a minute or so and that'll be ready for me to listen to with my eyes closed on the mag rail. Oh, and those photos from last night, mustn't forget. From my photos, collect all dated 13th November this year and share them with everyone in group business. Buzz me if anyone leaves a comment. By the way, we still use lithium polymer batteries in 2015, but they're, they're super efficient now and super small. The 1128 here has a tiny one amp hour battery that powers the Xanthia processor along, well, basically forever. We never have to worry about phone charging in 2015 because all phones now trickle charge inductively whenever we're at home or in the office. 
I did hear about a friend who had to buy a charger once when he went on a camping trip in the mountains, especially as he couldn't get a 5G signal out of the cloud. Ha! <laughs> he had to drop back to battery guzzling LTE. Cool. Old school. But I must dash. I'll be uh, interested to see where phones go in the next five years. I wonder if this tachyon link can be reversed. Maybe I can peek into 2020. I wonder what happens if I fix these two switches.